Hey, it's Julie at Love's Beginning, and I have a talk today called Live in the Glow. So the first idea I have is fearful thought seems to hold thing in place. And the ego will tell us that we need its version of stability, which is repetition of perception, perception that we believe we can depend on because we know what we're going to get. So like it's routines and repetition. So ego ego will tell us that's what we need. And then we live the enactment of trying to get what we need, trying to hold things in place. But we're using fearful thought to do that. So all that internal rigidity, we can feel all that internal resistance that's made a fearful thought. And today's the day to one by one find them instead of finding problems outside of ourselves and and to let them go and to remember everybody we meet as our savior. So everybody we meet will help us find those internal rigidities and will help us let them go if we don't believe that the rigidity is in them instead. So I was just having a conversation with a friend and it seemed like we were on, had two different perspectives. And um, I seem to be, you know, I have a consistently different perspective from hers. And what I'm being invited to see now is Any rigidity I saw in her is my internal rigidity and it's a reflection. So today, piece by piece, I can find that internal rigidity thought by thought. I can see what I'm believing, you know, like maybe I'm thinking she just doesn't see. Well, who's the she who doesn't see? (laughs) You know, if I'm feeling any internal rigidity, it is mine. Any tension, it's mine. And thought by thought, I get to let that go today. So that is the gift. Uh, let's see. Thought from ego seems to hold a manhole cover down, seems to prevent a gush into your life that ego calls destructive. Ego promises to keep you safe. So ego would call joy destructive. Joy is this gush of light that um, makes everything the ego says about holding things in place and controlling things. It makes all of it irrele- uh, irrelevant because we're safe. <laughs> we're held in love right now. And um, using effort from ego to try to hold things in place or build structures is, is just trying to hold joy back. And who needs to know that? The world? No. <laughs> My friends? No. <laughs> My family? No. I'm the one who needs to remember that. So I'm not building these internal rigidities and structures because then these internal rigidities and structures are going to be what's running my thinking, what's running my speaking, what's running my actions. What do I want to allow to run my actions? Love, my speech, love, (laughs) genuine, actual love. So that means every day I get the chance to be wrong because... Every time I bump into a feeling I don't like, a tension, a stress, um, this tension and stress seems to tell us who we are separate from others. But if instead we investigate and we let it go thought by thought, then we get to fall in love, just fall deeper in love every day and allow that love to determine everything for us, all of our perceptions. And our action in speech is just another perception. Okay. Let's see. Ego manufactures all your ideals. Spirit just guides with no reference to an ideal. So every time I bump into an ideal during the day, I can stop. I can recognize it's manufactured. I can recognize it's not real. I can ask to get help relying on what is real instead. This vast openness this vast joy that's always here, it's always present. Do I care to see it? Do I care to let it run everything? Do I care to allow it to run my entire perception of you? That's where we are every day. That's the opportunity we have every day in every situation with whoever we're with or whoever we're thinking of. All right. Ego whips you forward with thoughts of avoiding condemnation and achieving goals. So those are useful thoughts to discover. 
Am I attempting to avoid condemnation? Cleanliness of children is a very often for me about avoiding condemnation. And if I'm focusing on that, what would happen if I let that peace go? What would happen? Does a voice come up and say, but you have to establish control. Otherwise, this and that and the other thing. And I'm really starting to just listen to this voice. And thought by thought, just listen. And um, let it go gradually, you know, to be slow and thorough and patient and kind to myself and kind to everybody I'm looking upon and to realize I still speak from ego to the extent that I'm attached to this inner rigidity, this substitute for safety. And that's okay because we all learn to stop speaking from ego together. When I stop speaking from ego, I stop hearing you speak from ego. It's, it's a mirror. It happens. It seems to happen in one piece. It really does. So I'm looking at that a lot lately because the, the model I've had before is one becomes enlightened and then other people follow and become enlightened and then other people can become enlightened too. And I'm not saying that's not going to be how it looks, but I don't know. Simultaneous seems to be the word for me today. <laughs> it seems to be as I give, I receive and I have to give that same enlightenment to you. I have to be willing to see you as you truly are and to allow what we truly are to, in a sense, operate what I experience as me. So that's that's just where I am with it today. But every day is a day for allowing the rigidity to melt and allowing spirit to, to speak through us and to supply all of our thoughts. So I could have thoughts of achieving goals. Is there any tension and stress attached to achieving a particular goal? What's the reason I want to do it? Is it so I can finally feel okay? Is it because I think it's necessary for my safety? Is it because I think I need to be higher than somebody else? Is it for particular self-definition that I don't have now, but if I have that later, then I'll feel okay? Lots of things to look at when ego is talking to us about goals. Spirit just offers with no reference other than the purity of itself. And spirit sees the purity of itself everywhere. I'm starting to recognize this is my happiness. <laughs> Competition goes away when all you can look on is the purity of yourself. And if there seems to be something blocking that, when you look on something you call else, something that seems to be not you, if there seems to be something blocking that, then it's just me. It's just me and my thinking. That's the result of me and my thinking. <laughs> it's not the result of anybody else's actual defect. That's important for me because I have watched this documentary uh, called The Deep End, which is funny because I'm a social TV watcher. That's my pattern that I think is me, you know. For some reason, I never seem to want to watch anything. But if I'm with somebody, I can enjoy it thoroughly. But it seems like I like a social drinker. I'm a social TV watcher. But from the second I saw somebody mention this documentary, I thought I have to watch it. And uh, it's about Teal Swan, a spiritual teacher. And the thing about Teal Swan <laughs> is that um, I was determined not to see her purity and still am to some extent. It was an instant aversion from the very second I saw her, even though when I could listen to her, I'd say, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Just strong, inexplicable aversion. And to be able to see entirely through that and to you know, kind of see the real, the real her <laughs> waving at me from behind everything ego is piling on top of her. That's my joy. <laughs> so pick somebody who inexplicably seems to cause you to feel repulsion. It's all me when I feel it. It's, not, it's not, never anybody else. And allow that one to do so undo so many layers for you because you're seeing so many layers piled on top of that one. So 
in my journey through thinking there's something wrong with her, there's something deeply wrong with her, I get to see that's just the mirror. There's something wrong with me. There's something deeply wrong with me. And I get to let that go. So the ones who especially, especially for some reason seem to trigger you, they're, they can be, I don't want to say your greatest teachers, because one of the things that seems to bother me about her is that she seems to be posing as a greatest teacher. And I'm thinking, how could you do that? How could you not recognize your equality and, and promote? But at the same time I say that, do I have a secret wish to be a greatest teacher? I don't know, not so much anymore, because what's the point? But if I think I need to stand out to be comparative, to get some value, I think back to school and what I seem to learn there, but it was already in place. I can't blame social institutions for instilling these things in me. I came in with an attachment to ego, okay? It wasn't foisted upon me. I'm not the victim to it. It's just that being in the, these situations exposed it. And I had the opportunity way back then, so just trying to be the A student, and get some special attention or approval from doing what seemed to please people. I had the opportunity back then to become aware of these thought patterns and let them go. I just didn't know how. And we don't know how until we know how. But we know how now. So, <laughs> so we can get to work on that. And so there are these deep teachers all around us, especially the ones that we feel convinced are doing something egregiously wrong. Like, how could you be so arrogant? Guess what? I get to let my arrogance go today. And my arrogance has been making me miserable. So whenever I'm seeing it in somebody else, I'm seeing a chance to let go of what makes me unhappy. And why wouldn't I want to do that? Okay, so teachers everywhere. And she's a, she's a really interesting teacher for me because the things she says, many of them, not all of them, I'll feel such resonance with like, yep, yeah, that's right. That's like, check it off. Yep, you got it. You got it. You got it. But then somehow in your being, you don't got it, right? That's what I see when I look at her. Um, but I'm just looking in a mirror. Do I want to? Stop my resistance to spirit and let spirit really live me. Let spirit dictate everything to me, live in the safety of that. Do I want to trust that? Because this is my choice now. Then I don't have to feel disturbed at all when I look at her. I don't have to feel stirred up. There's nothing to be stirred up by. I'm not holding on to something that causes that feeling of extreme acute discomfort. I'm not letting that run my life. If I'm letting acute discomfort run my life, then I am going to look at you and feel acute discomfort. So yeah, opportunities everywhere. All right, where am I here? Spirit is the glow in every situation. The heart of willingness is where you rest to know and remember this glow. So every day I spend some time in this state of willingness. And the point is to allow the willingness to expand. So there aren't segments of time devoted to, I really would rather see something else. I'd rather see somebody else as flawed instead of seeing someone as the purity they are. Um, so that's, to me, that's what every day is for, to, re to learn to rest in the heart of willingness and to allow that heart of willingness to expand. So that's all that's left. I'm willing to see you as you are, not as you aren't. This is like a running into this documentary was a really important piece of bringing up these hidden thoughts and, you know, putting them to bed. <laughs> okay, live in the glow. You are safe in the glow. You remain in the glow. We can't leave that glow of love and light that we are. No matter what we think we're seeing, no matter what judgments we're making, that we're not actually capable of making, no matter what, we live in this glow. It's, it's what's real. Outside the glow, you know, when I've dampened it or obscured it, you only experience what is not you and not anyone else. 
So when I look at this Teal Swan documentary, and I'm thinking of the producers, because sometimes I'll think, oh, this has been unfairly cut. She's the victim of the producers who, no, I'm looking at the producers too. The producers are the purity of what they are. <laughs> Teal is the purity of what she is. All her followers are not victims of her or victims of anything or <laughs> aggressors. Um, you know, sometimes it looks like she is the victim of them. No one's a victim or an aggressor. It's what I choose to see. If, I, if I'm seeing it, I'm choosing to see it. But I could choose to see what's real instead. So what about compassion? What about empathy? What about being helpful to people? If you're trying to only see what's real in them, are you ignoring their suffering? Well, not if I'm not ignoring my own. <laughs> if, I, if I address my own suffering every day in a kind of, I don't know, very straightforward and honest fashion. If I'm seeing it outside of myself, I'm holding it inside of myself and I can let it go now, right now. <laughs> if I get really honest with myself, then if I'm brought into a situation with someone who's reflecting my suffering back to me, I'm more likely to be able to allow spirit to be able to act through me and speak through me. I can't fake it anymore. I can't act like being a helpful person or act like being a kind person or I got to do my best to get into alignment with spirit and allow spirit to do what it will. So in that sense, I don't have a job of being compassionate. I don't have a job of being kind, being friendly, being empathetic, being a good listener. I mean... If I enact those things, there's a lot of stress and tension there. And eventually that's going to snap. That's not real. But if I get what isn't out of the way, if I let go of all these thoughts that are just not true, then I'm more likely to be able to be truly helpful to you if, if you need some help. So here we are together, you know, doing the best we can with healing every day and having a lot of opportunities. So... Thank you for you and uh, happy healing.